Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be installing Gentoo Linux inside of a virtual machine. We're going to be using um, GNOME boxes and we're going to install Gentoo with systemd instead of OpenRC, its traditional init system. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is hop on over to the web browser here. You're going to want to go to gentoo.org slash downloads and we're going to download the minimal installation CD located right here. After that we're going to want to open up GNOME boxes in my case, my virtual manager. So first thing we want to do is grab our minimal installation disk that we have just downloaded. In my case I'm going to give it 8 gigabytes of RAM and we're going to give mine 75 gigabytes of storage. Also in my specific case I'm going to force this to shut down real quick. I'm going to go into preferences and I'm going to give it only four CPU cores so that way I have enough of system left for this recording. Alright, so we're going to name it Gen2 Linux with sysd. We're going to close that. We're going to want to fire that virtual machine up again. And as you can see we are using BIOS so we will be formatting our disks accordingly when that time comes. Let's go ahead and boot. Looks like we want number 43 in my case for the US keyboard. Alright, so now we're just going to head on over to the Gen 2 wiki. We're going to follow along with the AMD 64 handbook. Um, first chapter is about the Gen 2 Linux installation. Uh, choosing the right medium is the next one. Um, that's burning to a disc, a DVD, CD. It could be a USB. It could even be a floppy drive, I believe. They have every instruction imaginable on this wiki. It is very thorough. Uh, the next step and where I'm going to personally begin is configuring the network. So let's just find out if we have internet connection first. So we're going to ping... Uh, GNU.org uh, and there it goes control C to exit out of that next thing we are going to do is pretty much skip through this entire chapter this chapter includes instructions of DHCPCD um, manual connection to the internet wireless access over the command line um, you'll be using WPA supplicant I believe in that case you also have options for IF config um, anyway we're not going to worry about most of that stuff because in this virtual machine we already have internet access so the first step we want to do is partition our disks since we are going to be partitioning not in an EFI setup, but in a BIOS setup. So we're going to fire up FDisk. It is a command line disk partitioning utility. It has been a long, around for a long time. We're going to point FDisk at dev slash VDA. All right, so the first one is going to be new partition. This is primary. It will start here. It's going to end at plus 256 megabytes. 256 megabytes. The next partition is going to be primary. We want it to be number two. It's going to pick up where the last one left off. This one is going to be plus 16 gigabytes. And then we have another new partition, primary, partition number three. The first sector will pick up where the last left off, and this will be the rest of the disk. Let's get a printout and make sure. Okay, that looks more like it. So, 
after that we're going to go ahead and set up our T for types um, number one is going to be to hit L list them all we want number 83 to the printout well, it looks like they're all defaulted to Linux so we actually just have to do uh, T for types number two and we can actually see our list up there I believe I believe we want to go with number 82 there we go now that setup is Linux swap let's get a printout alright that looks good the next step is going to be writing this layout this looks good to me W for write the next step is going to be creating the file systems so mkfs dot ext4 and we want that to be slash dev slash vda1 mkfs dot ext4 and that's going to be slash dev slash vda3 next we want to mkswap make swap and that'll be slash dev slash vda2 next is swap on slash dev slash vda2 next we want to mount the root partition so mount slash mnt or yes yes that's correct so we would go mount slash dev slash vda 3 2 slash mnt slash gen 2 tab to complete there you go next thing we're going to do is go ahead and sync this to a time server so we'll do ntpd dash q space dash g all right and it's going to sync the clocks for us in this virtual machine to a local time server be careful you are giving out your IP address at this time which I'm okay with this virtual machine will will be okay so next step is to change directory into slash mnt slash gentoo next we want to fire up links the command line web browser and we're going to go to gentoo.org slash downloads slash mirrors Georgia Tech. We're going to see how fast we can do this. Going down to releases. We're going down to AMD 64. Auto builds. Stage. We don't want that one. We want current stage 3 AMD 64 system D stage 3 AMD desktop system D let's go ahead and save that okay overwrite alright so now we are downloading the stage 3 tarball there you go so this file is what we will unpack into the actual operating system it is downloading onto the newly partitioned and mounted disk so cue the quit out links uh, yeah that's fine let's run the ls command and there you can see the stage 3 the next step is to do tar xpvf 
stage three. And then we want to uh, give it these flags. So hyphen, hyphen, X adders. X A T T R S dash include equals uh, asterisks star dot star asterisks space hyphen hyphen numeric hyphen owner. All right, there you go. So now we are unpacking that stage three tarball onto the newly mounted disk. And this is what is going to become our entire Linux system after we're done. At least the file system. We haven't installed anything like the init system, the kernel. While it's doing that, this is actually a perfect time to show you another item here on our web browser. So we're going to switch over to Firefox real quick. And I'm going to show you something else about GCC optimization. At this point, after this, we will be setting use flags and we will be compiling our software on this computer. So we need to think about this is actually what we're going to run right here in our uh, make.com file. Um, so we're going to go through this page real quick. There's actually a lot of different use flags you could be running. Um, very specific to what type of hardware you may have. In my case, we're just going to be sticking with the MArch equals Skylake as this is a ninth gen intel coffee lake refresh is still 14 nanometers so it's still covered under the same use flags for gen 2. let's go ahead and switch back over to our virtual machine and let's open up a uh, nano dash w and we'll go into slash mnt slash gen 2 slash Etsy slash portage slash make dot conf oh that's not where we want to be MN, MNT gen 2 Etsy up oh, see I type two P's so this is our make dot conf this is where we will set our use flags All right, and then our next step, I'm going to add in a few other things here from my notes. So this is um, where we're going to deter, define a new set of use flags. And they are going to be right there wrapped in quotes. This will be system d x gtk gnome uh, we want we don't want that we'll call that good right there I'm actually going to put a backslash and then start a new line because I like to keep my make.conf a little uh, organized so we do not want to use e log in d we do not want to use qt5 we do not want to use any kde software and we're going to wrap that up in another set of quotes and we're going to add a another line here i like to enter again 
Next line is going to be make opts. equals quote hyphen j4 i have four cpu cores and eight gigabytes of ram so we can handle four jobs at once if you think of it that way four cores eight gigs of ram those are the determining factors so whichever let's say you have three cpu cores and 12 gigs of ram you could still only do make ops three but let's say it was the other way around, it would be the lowest common denominator. Half of the amount of system memory or the number of CPU cores, but whichever one is less. I happen to have four cores and eight gigs of RAM, so either way you look at it, this will work out great. So control X and we'll say Y the right, enter, there you go. Let's go ahead and clear the screen, get ready for the next step which is installing the Gen 2 base system. So let's go ahead and run mirror select dash I space dash O and two right pointing chevrons and that's going to be going into slash MNT slash Gen 2 slash Etsy slash portage POR portage tab to complete slash uh, make.conf and let's fire up mirror select. This is a nice little in curses menu here. We're going to scroll down to US of A. I like to uh, personally select all of the colleges so space to select, arrow keys to navigate through. There we go, those are plenty of mirrors for me. And enter to hit OK. Now we'll clear the screen. Let's get rid of that. Now we're going to make a new directory and we're going to give it the parents flag. And it's going to be in slash MNT slash Gen 2 slash Etsy Portage Repos.conf. So Etsy slash Portage slash Repos dot conf. Next, we're going to copy. Uh, the contents of slash mnt slash gen2 slash user share uh, portage config repos dot conf and that's going to be going into that directory we just made so it'll be slash mnt slash gen2 slash etsy slash portage slash repos dot conf slash gen2 dot conf okay next step is to take a peek with a text editor or you know what, how about this? We'll just uh, take that previous directory and we'll uh, use the cat command, concatenate. That should list it out. And it looks like everything is all there. Yep. Next step is to copy our DNS info into the live environment. So let's. Uh, cp space dash dash d reference d reference and that'll be slash etsy slash resolve dot conf and that'll be going into slash mnt slash gen2 slash etsy 
All right, now we have to mount the necessary file system, so. root to slash mnt slash gen2 and we want that to be slash bin slash bash all right now that we have true in let's go ahead and so you let's source our Etsy profile, so slash Etsy slash profile. Okay, next step we're going to do is to uh, export our PS1 equals equals uh, quote parenthesis cheroot parenthesis space dollar sign squiggly bracket uh, PS1 squiggly bracket and a quote that's just to tell us that we are in the, within the cheroot environment Next step is to mount the boot partition slash dev slash VDA one. We want to mount that as slash boot. There we go. Uh, next step is to configure portage. So we should run emerge dash webr sync. All right, so that will take uh, about a minute or two, not too long. All right, now that that's done, we're going to emerge sync. We don't want it to be quiet. We want to get all the glory on that display. This is now going to sync the repositories uh, with the newest mirror images, and it'll let us know if we have any updates.
All right, so now we're going to do an e select profile list. It looks like we are actually going to change the profile at this point. So we're going to do e select profile. Oh man, my mouse is always weird in this virtual machine. System D. Desktop GNOME System D. That's the one we want. Profile 7. So we're going to do an E select profile set 7. E select profile set 7. All right, let's go ahead and run that E select profile list again. And you can see that now we are have this asterisk here next to default GNOME system D. That's the one we want. All right, so now we get to emerge ask verbose update deep uh, new use at world verbose not verbose all right, and what this is going to do is update the currently installed packages on the system uh, based off of the profile and our make.conf. And because we had selected a full desktop environment, there are 38 packages it has to compile from source, so this process could take a little bit of time. All right, now that that is completed, the next step is to emerge ask and we want the app portage slash CPU ID to CPU flags. Okay, now that we have that, we can go ahead and echo quote star slash star dollar sign 
CPU to CPU flags. That needs to be in parentheses. In quotes, and that's going to have a right pointing chevron going into slash Etsy slash portage. Slash package dot use slash zero zero CPU dash flags. Okay, all right, so the next step is to configure the time zone. So since we are using systemd, we are going to use a different command than what you would normally use with openrc. That's ln-sf uh, dot dot slash user share zone info and we're going to do America slash Denver for my time zone and that's going to be going into slash Etsy slash local time and the next step is to set a locale so we're going to nano dash w into slash etsy slash locale dot gen now we want to uncomment the lines pertaining to us that's going to be this us one right here all right, control X, we'll save that. Enter, um, E select, locale, list. Next, we're going to update the environment. So, env dash update. and and source the new profile at slash etsy slash profile and we also want to keep our new ps2 that lets us know we are in a truded environment so we'll do and and export PS1 equals quotation parenthesis to root parenthesis dollar sign squiggly bracket PS1 squiggly bracket close it off don't forget the quote at the end all right the next step is configuring the kernel. So in this case, I'm actually not going to be compiling my own custom kernel. I am going to go with a little bit of an easier to maintain setup here, where we are going with a pre-compiled distribution kernel. All right, so we'll do emerge ask And this is going to be sys dash kernel slash gen2 dash kernel dash bin. All 
All right, so this is actually going to go a lot faster as well than compiling our own kernel from source since we're downloading a pre-compiled binary. So this should go a bit faster as well during the installation. All right, so now that we have got our Linux kernel installed, um, we are ready for the next step, which is configuring the system. There is another advantage to running a uh, distribution kernel like what we have selected, and that's going to be system updates. Whenever a new Linux kernel is released for Gen 2, it will automatically be updated on this system. No more compiling your kernel every time there is an update. Alright, so the next step is setting up our file system table and that is done by typing nano dash w slash etsy slash fs tab and now that we're here we're going to follow their recommendations here so alright so it'll be slash dev slash VDA1 the next line is going to be for our swap partition And the next line is going to be slash dev slash VDA3. So now that our file system table has been created, I think I'm actually going to change this to a zero as that is what it is on the Gen 2 wiki. So control X and Y, enter, that'll save that file. Next step is to set the system host name. Looks like we're actually going to run a slightly different command since systemd is not currently what we use to boot. So we're going to do systemd dash first boot prompt uh, set up machine. ID. Welcome to your new installation of Gen 2 Linux. Please configure your system. Press any key to proceed. Press enter system key map name or number. List. Okay. So we're just going to have to select the key map again for system D. It looks like we want number 230 for the US key map. Please enter host name for the new system. Okay. Gen 2 dash box. Next step is to configure our network on the system. So we need to emerge ask uh, net dash miss. Miscellaneous slash DHCPCD.
FPS. All right, so system CTL enable now DHCPCD. This is telling our run client that we want this program started now and every time the computer starts. Next, we want to change the hosts file. So nano dash W into slash Etsy slash hosts. So here's a couple of things we want to do here. Uh, number one, if you had the IP address of other systems on your local network, you could define them here and give them an alias as well. For me, I'm just going to change this line here or add another one. So we're going to say uh, gen2-box for our host name. That is one of its aliases. And that's what we're going to leave it as right there. So control X, Y, enter. It looks like our next step is to set the system password. So P A S S W D. Our new password needs to be strong and secure. All right, password is set up. Uh, next step is to do system CTL preset dash all and then dash dash preset dash mode equals enable dash only so the next step now is installing system tools okay so when it comes down to the system logger system D has its own system logger built in which is known as journal at that point, I don't have to install uh, sysclogd or whatever. We do not have to run any RC update commands, obviously. But we will be installing the cron daemon. So we'll do emerge ask uh, sys hyphen processes slash crony. Next, we want to system CTL enable uh, crony. Next, um, I am going to enable SSH on this virtual box. SSHD for the daemon. There we go. All right, so next step we need to do is deal with time synchronization. Um, system D already has a daemon built into it, so we'll just enable that service. So system CTL enable system D dash time sync d dot service d dot service it 
install our DHCP client. The next step is installing a bootloader. So we're going to emerge ask verbose sys dash boot slash grub yes All right, next step is to actually install grub onto the system. So we'll do <coughs> grub dash install space slash dev slash VDA. The next step is to configure grub. So we'll do grub dash mk config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub cfg dot cfg so now we have grub installed next step we're going to add a user so user add dash m dash capital G and we'll name this user and we want this user to be a member of multiple groups here they have the users group listed as well as the wheel group audio I'm also going to add video and we want to give it the S flag and with that's setting the shell the shell flag to slash bin slash bash All right. And then we want to do password. So P A S S W D and we'll just say the username. And our password is going to be the same one I used before. That way I don't have to remember two passwords for this virtual machine. All right, the password is now set. So let's go ahead and run the ls command. Let's get rid of that stage three right there now that we don't need it anymore. Let's run the ls command. That looks kind of like a uh, normal Linux file system now. All right, so if we did everything correctly we can now reboot the system where we have to exit the cheroot now that we are out of the cheroot let's go ahead and change to the live CDs home directory and here we are going to unmount our file systems slash mnt slash gen2 slash dev and then squirrely brackets here we're gonna do slash shm comma slash pts comma squirrely brackets oh it's just u mount my apologies 
And then we're going to unmount with the R flag slash MNT slash Gen2. And now we will try to reboot the system. Remove the live CD. And with a little bit of luck, fingers crossed, there's Grub. Now you can see we can boot into Gen2 Linux. It's loading the kernel. And look at all that system D goodness right there. All right, look at that. We are now logged into our freshly installed Gen2 install. Now that we are the root user, we can emerge ask app misc slash neofetch. Let's go ahead and sue back to my user. I think we can just exit. And let's run a neofetch. Look at that. So this Gen2 Linux installation is using systemd as its init system. And we are set up with a very bloated 145 megabytes of RAM at idle. Alright guys, there you go. This has been my Gen2 Linux systemd installation. That wasn't really that hard now, was it? A really short process, and actually when you compare this process to something, say, like Windows, it really doesn't take that much longer. You know, installing Windows 10 or 11 could take upwards to an hour. And this installation probably took me about an hour and a half all in, and if I wasn't talking you through the video, it probably would have gone even quicker. So, that's it guys, thanks for watching. Tune in next week. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe if you like the content. Let me know. Thanks, guys.